Legend Total War here, and today we've got a Rate Your Doomstack video covering a Thorgrim Grudgebearer Hammerer Doomstack, where we've got 13 Hammerers, one of which is the Peak Gate Guard, uh, two Organ Guns, four Runesmiths, and Thorgrim Grudgebearer. We're going up against Marathi, she's got two full stacks plus a settlement garrison, so 47 units in total, we're outnumbered quite significantly. Order Resolve says that we'll win, but we'll lose two of the, of the Hammerers, so we'll see how we go going up against this. Alright, so another thing with this is that with the update, Thorgum Grudgebearer provides 15% physical resistance to hammer units within his army, which is why they've got such high resistance. So these ones here, so the ones with at least 7 experience have 30% physical resistance, these ones here have 15, and some of these banners, so these ones here providing additional 15, so these ones here have 45% physical resistance, these ones here... Ward save plus 10% and the passability Master Rune of Grogni, which is providing missile resistance, but it also affects allies in range. Okay. Okay, so 10% plus 30%. Okay. And they've also got 30% magic resistance, which you, you can get that up to 45% as dwarfs if you defeat Heinrich Kemmler and get the Black Pyramid of Nagash. But since we're not really dealing with that much magic damage, apart from the Black Ark abilities, um... Actually, that would be very useful, an extra 10%, but whatever, he hasn't done that. Anyway, let's just jump into the battle here and see how we go. So, I think with this particular army build here, um, there's definitely some major concerns that I have. I feel like when you build the Doomstack, you're building like a really good team, right? And Like an unbeatable team. But I'm seeing a conflict here. These guys are clearly designed to rush at the enemy and like just get into melee combat as quickly as possible, especially when dealing with a armor-piercing missile faction like um, the Dark Elves. You don't want to sit there and get shot constantly because even with 45% physical resistance, you're still, you're still going to get fucking wrecked by shades. So we want to charge them in, but we've got artillery here and we don't want them to charge in, so there's a conflict. These guys here holding a defensive position aren't as good as Iron Breakers because they don't have shields and they don't have as much armor and they don't have as much melee defense. And then of course we don't have missile superiority so that's a bit of an issue here. So I've already tested out this army in this battle a few times with a few different strategies to see which would perform the best. I tried rushing at them and it was absolutely awful. We got fucking annihilated. They just ripped us through us. It seemed like our physical resistance counted for nothing. And then there's other more conservative strategies which definitely perform a lot better. So that's what we're going to do here to showcase. To showcase this Doomstack at its best. So what we want to do here, put the artillery on the hill. And we want to hide all the hammerers here. Just to begin with, because the... Reaper Bolt Throwers and the Shades and the Dark Shards, all of them are just too much for these Hammerers. Even with all the buffs that you've provided, you get absolutely destroyed if you charge in. It's got nothing to do with micro ability as well because these guys are slow. They were in combat the entire time and because we're outnumbered 2 to 1, they're fighting something in melee and they're getting shot by something else because we're badly outnumbered. So... Maybe if it was a one-on-one -on -one fight, as, you know, if, like a fair fight, 20 versus 20, totally fine to just rush in there. But when we're outnumbered like this, which is pretty usual for this campaign, uh, this game, to sort of have to deal with that stuff. Like, if you're going to send a Doomstack and it's only going up against one army, that's not really that's not really a good test. So two armies is definitely a good test, and um, it didn't do well in that situation. But that doesn't mean it isn't necessarily good. We just need to use it well. So what? Whoops! I want to do that for. It's fine. <laughs> that was silly. <laughs> it's not what I meant to press. It's alright. Absolutely no harm in not doing that at the beginning. Okay, and we just wait for them to come at us. We want to keep the heroes up front because the artillery won't do much damage to us. Okay, Thorgrim Grudgebearer has got stalked, so he must have defeated Snitch. Get them to use up their abilities early. So they don't use it on the hammerers, because the hammerers are very susceptible to it. Uh, there's also shades over here, which we get the organ guns to get rid of. And these guys here have Iron Warden tankards, so they can start regening 
Whereas these guys here can't. We do have the uh, Ancestral Rune of Valeria, which is really good. But it's really good if you go into a blob. So it's good for hero doom stacks. Not necessarily for melee infantry doom stacks. Because, you know, putting that on one unit seems like a bit of a waste. Alright. Yep, just let the organ guns rip them to shreds there. Try to cycle these guys out. The ones that are, aren't damaged. Aren't damaged can go in there. We've also got this one here. Providing invulnerability and an air of effect. That's really good as well. But you could essentially build this army in any dwarf faction. As long as you've got Thorgrim Grudgebearer. But it needs to be Thorgrim Grudgebearer commanding. So, good amount of ammo on there. Despite not having a master engineer. He's shooting at us, but that's okay, we're dodging some of it. Yeah, get some Rune of Wrath and Ruin on you. We can't outrange the Reaper Bolt Throwers, so best case scenario for them is just use up all their ammo. This guy here is taking too much damage, but that's okay. That's it, keep using these abilities now, because it doesn't do much to single entities. Or it doesn't do as much to single entities as it does to the, to the uh, Hammerers. also use the Rune of Slowness to slow them down, but just don't worry about it too much just yet. Okay, let's do that. This guy here is taking a bit too much, but he's got a um, thing. They've already done a good amount of damage. Okay, all good so far, I think. Because these are the units that would give the Hammerers the hardest time. Okay, here comes Marathi. We're going to have to start charging in real soon, I think. Let's give her a rune of slowness. And also increase our melee attacks so we smash her as quickly as possible here. Alright, make sure we're shooting at missile units specifically, like dark shards. Alright, we need to start moving up. We're getting ready to attack. We won't last that much longer like this. Okay, get them in there. I'm probably going to pop down this in a moment. Get him over. Okay, I'm ready to do it now, I think. Shit, not close enough. Get them all together. There we go. That'll make them invulnerable for a few seconds. Go, go, go. Uh, that's not ideal there. That's all fine. Let's go with another rune of uh, with this one. Okay, we're going to charge it. Try to move out. Okay, they're popping down some stuff over here. Okay. Okay, and we start coming around at them now. Command over here. Marathi's almost dead, but the hammer is not really killing them that fast. Doing some shit. Okay, that's the organ guns are still shooting at decent targets. Ooh, yeah, that, that was okay. That was okay. All right, and let's put down. Let's see if we. No, crap. They're, yeah, we managed to rampage. Okay. Okay, she's almost gone. Come on, a couple more hits. Hang on, we've got, we've got incoming here, don't let them get the organs. Okay, we got rid of Marathi, that's good, that's good. Alright, let's pop down a big heal in there. Where's this one? Okay, this one came off the artillery a little bit. At least we've used up most of our ammo. But, if we can just click on it. 
Pretty good. Yes. Yes. How about some? All right, then we want Rune of Speed to no annihilate them as trouble. quickly as possible. How's this guy doing? He's taking damage. He's all right. Good. The Rune of Valet is really helping them uh, negate their damage dealing here. Get rid of the Dark Shots. How are they going for kills? They're doing great. Loads and loads of kills there. Okay, how you doing? For the ancestor gods. We need someone to chase after the Dark Shards. But you come back over this way. Get after them. Okay, pull this guy back so he doesn't get wiped out. He's done enough. Okay, more rune. Okay, here's what we can do, right? We can do a rune of speed and then overcast rune of speed and it stacks. And then you can do a rune of wrath and ruin. Alright, just there. We'll do it. Okay, we're winning the battle at the moment. That's good. Almost out of ammo on these guys here. They've done a great job for us. 400 fucking kills. That's great. Our heroes have just about used up all their healing. Okay, let's get one of these down here. Oh, that fucking bloody notification. Piss off. This <laughs> is so irritating. Good thing they didn't have goddamn... Uh, dark conduit. Because man, that can fuck you up. And yeah, you can see now that the the missile units are the biggest problem for the hammerers by far. Like we just can't catch them. Shit! Oh, he's got a rune of spite on him. <laughs> that's why. Okay, that's uh, there's too many guys that. We gotta get over there and help him out, or else that one's gonna get killed. Okay, we're completely out of ammo with them. They did a great job. Uh, just bring him back over here. Okay, you're gonna get shot. Yeah, just keep chasing after them. I don't know what else we can do with it. Well, we don't get any more ancestral runes of Valea, so no more healing for us. Alright, but we've got runes of slowness. that we already caught, but that's okay. I wonder if this army might actually be better in, like, Rombrindle's army, because he provides... Was it 35% extra speed for all units? So even though you lose the physical resistance, I would say that speed would be more useful here. Because, like, we just... I can't fucking catch him. catch up over here that would be okay yeah you really want to avoid this sort of situation here where you're spread out across the map chasing after skirmishers I mean you don't really get a choice you got to deal with these guys but it's definitely something you want to avoid I think okay try to bring these guys back let's get organized to at least some degree before we take on the last few units over here all right so they've got cold one chariots which there is zero percent chance of actually catching up to them all right we got too many chasing after it over here. Just one will do. Just run them off the map. Same thing there. Just one will do. And we want to try to get organized to fight together against this. Make sure all of our guys are back over here. But we got to stop these guys here from shooting because at least while they're, they're running away from us, they can't shoot. So, I don't know. This is a huge weakness to slow melee infantry when dealing with uh, skirmishes like this. And now they're going to charge at us. You just keep chasing after them, I'll send you some reinforcements in a moment. 
anyway, that'll make him pretty much invulnerable just for a few seconds. And good timing because there's the army losses anyway. Alright, we didn't need this other one here. I could have used it, but, it, but we weren't taking any damage really at that point. I was about to use it if they sent in the Kubitus. That's fine. Cool. Well, so I fought this battle a couple of times, and uh, charging in, like, at the start, well, I actually, actually lost the battle. Um, doing this, we got the heroic victory. So, doing this strategy definitely works, which is reliant less on the hammerers and actually more on the organ guns and heroes. And if we have a look at the actual damage values of the hammerers, it's not that good. And since we weren't using them to sort of, like, protect the organ guns. We were using the organ guns to protect them. It's kind of the opposite of how it should be. So let's have a look at some of the damage values here. So Thorgrim did 52,000 damage, but he's got the Rune of Spite, so that kind of makes sense there. He's essentially a Mortis Engine. Look at this guy. Like an, like an 11,000 damage. I think he did a couple of uh, Rune of Wrath and Ruins in some good spots. 7,000 damage. 4,000 damage. 6,000. 6,000. 2,000. I mean, that's not good. These are damage dealers. And then 32,000, 26,000. So... Mm. Just thinking about um, how to rate this now. Here's the problem I think that we're facing is that you've got a unit that appears to have First received a buff drink, in terms of stats, right? Because it does splash attack damage. But as as I've said many times before, you really can't get too caught up on stats unless the stats reach a like a critical threshold. Like for example, when a unit becomes essentially immune to damage. Uh, but if a unit is just like reduced damage by like 20, 30, even 40 percent, that's not that big of a deal. Like there's a huge difference between 40 percent damage reduction and 80 percent damage reduction, right? Because um, like I'm just thinking back to also like the white line of Kray's army that Mercy the Mad made. Like that was pretty much 80 percent damage re reduction, and they like those are six white lions, and they just shredded everything. Um, and that didn't happen here at all. And, you know, we had all these runes and everything. He's put a lot of effort into making this super strong. And in order to win, I had to, like, not use them, at least to an extent. Um, at least not at the start. I mean, we did need them, but I'm just thinking, in that particular battle there, this army would have been better if we had done this. Instead of two organ guns, I'd say four organ guns, maybe... Maybe a Grudge Thrower, just for extra range. Um, four Thunderers, because let's have a look at Thunderers, right? Where are they? So, they've got Shield Block, right? So, looking at these guys here, they've got a lot of physical resistance, right? These guys wouldn't have any physical resistance, but they've got 35% uh, Shield Block rate. So, any of the armor-piercing missiles being shot at them would still be for the most part, blocked. And it would actually be reduced... They would actually take less damage than the hammerers that don't have runes. And I guess you could just put, like, a rune of Grugni on it, which would give it uh, missile resistance as well. So that might actually be better. And they have way higher damage output than hammerers. And then instead of the hammerers, what if you got iron breakers, which, if we have a look at iron breakers... Uh, where are they? There. Which you could globally recruit in one turn. That's friggin' awesome. Okay, like they've got higher armor value. These are with one experience. Higher armor value. Higher shield block, so that's 35%. And their melee defense is insane. So if... If the enemy, like, Hargoneth Executioners were charging in on them, it takes them forever to get through an Ironbreaker. And also, the Ironbreakers have a missile attack that has a pretty decent range at 60, and it does a lot of damage. So, I can see what he was trying to do here, to, to try to utilize Storgrim's special, you know, skill here for the physical resistance. But I would say that that physical resistance just doesn't really compensate for just having a, dare I say it, a balanced army. Um... You know, where you've got 
artillery, missile units, and melee infantry. Um, even better still, don't even use melee infantry and just use more heroes. And maybe instead of four artillery, go five artillery and five, um, five, uh, what's it called? Um, Thunderers. Oh yeah, and an, and a Iron Drake. Iron Drakes can get shitloads of damage. And you put a Thane in there, and then you get extra 15%, so 50% extra ammo, and then you put a Master Engineer in there, and you get, well, you don't get the extra range anymore, but you get the extra missile damage, the firing rate, and extra ammunition. See, we don't have an Engineer in here. So, yeah... This Doomstack is not better than, in, in my opinion, a standard Dwarf army. Um, standard late game army. Because this has way too many weaknesses. There are some situations that I think the Hammerer Doomstack would be extremely good against. But this definitely wasn't one of them. Um, so, this would be really good against armies that have no missiles and essentially no magic. So, uh, well, magic doesn't matter too much. But if you went up against vampire accounts, I imagine it would be pretty good. Because, you know, they don't have any skirmishes. Their grave guard would just melt. Um... Tomb Kings would probably be okay because they don't have that much armor-piercing missiles. They tend to just recruit uh, skeleton spam. But I don't think Tomb Kings have ever really been that difficult to deal with in the first place. So why would you build a Doom Spat that specifically designed for them? And probably Beastmen because Beastmen don't have very good missile units and they rely very heavily on ambushes. And this would be quite uh, resistant to ambushes. This would be awful against Skaven. Skaven would laugh at this because all of the Skaven units are so much faster than them. Uh, the Poison Wind and, and um, Death Glow Bombardiers would just just annihilate them. Just fucking delete them off the face of the map. Uh, rattling Guns would slow you down. Gisales would rip you to shreds before you get close. Skaven would take a giant steaming shit all over this. And then Menace Below would just get rid of your organ guns while you're trying to chase them. This would be awful against Skaven. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, in terms of rating this, it doesn't feel like a Doomstack. So I'm going to give this a 6.5 because I think it's actually not as good as just a, like a standard army, which is actually cheaper than it as well. Um, there are some situations where it is better, but like a standard army can handle all situations normally. The main thing that it's really shit against, like the artillery, missile units, and melee infantry based uh, dwarf army, is if it gets ambushed, or if the terrain is really bad, which is rare, but it can happen. Um, so I think a 6.5 is all I can give this. I appreciate the effort that went into making this. He clearly did a good job in as far as a hammer or a doom stack, but you know, their damage output, it just, it wasn't that high. Um, like, we sent them in after we had already worn out the enemy. Like, they were ex they were already worn out. These guys could have gotten loads of kills, and they still took a lot of damage. Like, I had to pull one of them out because they were getting close to getting annihilated. Even with the physical resistance, they still died very quickly. Albeit, you know, the Dark Elves are a very high damage race. Um, so it was an appropriate test. They just didn't succeed in the test, in my opinion. So, I'd still think that, uh, you know, Ironbreakers are the way to go. But that's just my opinion. You're free to disagree. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. If you think I'm being harsh on a 6.5 here, or whether you think this is like a... There is no way you could possibly think this is a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 armies are reserved for zero IQ plays, where you just charge them in and they just can't lose. Like the Wargore Doomstack, like the Pompous Doomstack, that kind of stuff. You know, where anybody could get a heroic victory in any situation. That's 10 out of 10 armies. 9 out of 10 armies are for like, Doomstacks that are like, really good, but they do have some weaknesses. And, uh, you know, a 7 out of 10 is for an army that's sort of like, very good. And this was difficult to use, because if we had just charged in there, we would have lost. Um, anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know your thoughts. I'm very curious about it. Maybe I just didn't use the hammerers right. Feel free to give me some feedback. I felt that holding them back and hiding them at the start was a very good decision, but maybe you guys have a better idea of what I should have done with this battle that maybe could have given this a higher score. I'm curious to know your thoughts. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.